in in four previous videos i reviewed basic strain gauge concepts how beam type sensors are configured and um, wheatstone bridge and and amplifier and so now i'm just going to give you an overview of some application examples show you how all these concepts are put together and in particular show you the load cell that we currently use in the lab to make force measurements so in a sense it constitutes all of this kind of system here as a measurement system or a force type measurement here's a beam type setup that we've used in the past that uses a the cantilevered beam configuration discussed earlier four strain gauges configured as a full wheatstone bridge and the output of the bridge serves as inputs to this instrumentation amplifier and then the output from this guy can then in the form of amplified voltage can go directly to some form of data acquisition so that this volt this force here then is related to this voltage in the past we've also monitored the deflection end of that beam with what's called a linear variable differential transformer to measure measure displacement you can use a basic scale to measure the displacement as well although an lvdt can be a little bit more accurate i'm going to show you a few other force sensors that use similar designs this is a a belt force measurement then I want to show you how the beam type sensor can be used in an application this was a setup uh, used quite some time ago to and these are sanding belts um, former student built two pulleys put a sanding belt on there and then this pulley was instrumented with a strain gauge type sensor I want to show you how you could build your own so I call these homemade force sensors and so what this student did was they designed as you can see a little cut out so this has a beam type configuration as you can see cut out into this disc this is a you know this is a probably about a one inch disc and so this little beam you know, sits by itself inside that segment right like that so we can deflect and then it kind of comes up like that that's the rest of the so it it, it can deflect you know within that you know so when there's forces tangentially put on here by the belt you have a little full full bridge beam there that can measure what are those tangential forces kind of a neat little design and that's again full bridge so every, everything that you've learned about full bridges can be applied when you can apply those strain gauges on there and you have your own force sensor here's another way to measure now the normal forces this was just a cutout now from that disc. Cut a section out here, and now you've got a little beam there. Now note that there was only two beams that were active up on the top side. So you know you can imagine looking down on top, there was two gauges here and then two gauges down here that actually weren't active. Only two of them were active, but you could still then detect kind of the bending of that beam, and so you could measure the normal forces put on that belt. So you know you have a belt going across that. It's got some normal forces on that disc. So neat little application. Here's another sensor that I built a long time ago. It's a it's an XY force transducer. So this is kind of a neat design. It's as you can imagine, there's four beams. Let's kind of do it. And then with a plate at the end like that. So the four beams are mounted. It's kind of hard to draw it like this, but and then they're fixed on the ends over here, right? Uh, looking at it from 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 uh, over here from this face you you basically have two you know two bridges one is uh, on the interface of these beams and the other is on on these interfaces so the any any forces in this direction you can figure that like a full bridge forces in this direction you use these four gauges to measure say the x and here to measure the y each one of those is wired separately as a full bridge. And so you can measure XY forces. So as you apply 
and so this was holding a cylinder here and as forces were put you know out of the plane of the page as well as up and down you can measure simultaneously the xy forces so again there's two bridges there that are active so you have two channels of force and here's some analysis i did a long time ago finite element analysis to show that the strain that i'd get where those gauges were located for an applied load would give me enough output voltage you know using the same principles that we've talked about in the other videos now this is uh, more direct to the lab that we're doing in 144l is i adopted this new type of uh, binocular beam uh, type design this is actually this is a dual beam but i'm talking more about this binocular type load cell and you see these a lot um, in different um, you know you can buy these from different manufacturers you can find them on different websites uh, very from very low cost the one that i that we're using i'll show you in a second um, and i had never used one of these before but this has a very different design from the cantilevered beam note there's strain gauges are mounted right over these like these binocular sections uh, one strain gauge active along this axis another one here now how are those wired well you can see when you apply this load down here, right, this, so you apply a load down here, this gauge will be in tension and this one will be in compression, right? And so here's the low cost binocular load. So you can, can find some high grade ones, and this one that I found. Um, uh, was only about ten dollars so I wanted to use a low-cost one to see how well they'd work as you can see it's got that binocular design and here are the dimensions in millimeters and you can see the spec page from the manufacturer is conf it's configured as a wheatstone bridge you got four gauges on here okay I'll show you a little bit more information on this but first I wanted to show you uh, a little demo I wasn't sure about how this would work, right? I wanted to use these in a in a bending application, um, but I wasn't sure. I wanted to prove to myself that if I applied a tip load here, you know, if I, if I fix this sand here, and if I applied a tip load here, that I was going to get, you know, the right tension compression type stress. That assumed that you know that this side of the beam here wasn't that I wasn't going to have tension. I guess I was thinking that this was going to be more like typical cantilevered beam if I applied a tip load. Turns out that that's what these binoculars are for, and I'm going to show you that through this little demo. Right? And so I did, I took a piece of foam and I cut out from a block of some firm foam um, this binocular design here, right? Cut all the way through. This is a four by four inch piece of foam. And as you can see, when you apply a tip load, you see how this section, you can see the lines. This is in tension, this is in compression. And down here, it's in tension and compression. So it turns out the way these, these um, strain gauges are mounted on this binocular beam is very different from what you've seen for the typical cantilever beam. You want these two gauges, this guy and this guy, again, to be on opposite arms, like two and three, and one and four should be, so when you wire, when you would wire these together, they need to be configured in the typical Wheatstone bridge so that the two compression and the two tension are on opposite arms as shown here, right? Finally, I just wanted to show you the spec page um, for this, and again, I found this the low cost sensor on sparkfun.com and here's an exact uh, link to it uh, pay special attention to the capacity the rated output remember how the um, the output of the full bridge is is always delta v over v that's the rated output right and that's the excitation voltage so whatever excitation voltage you give it'll define this rated output and that remember is always going to be equal to the gauge factor of the sensors times the strain as long as you have it in a full bridge okay and so note they give you that value for and here's uh, here's the one that we're going to be using in the lab it's the 100 uh, gram 
full load because it's a small it's a low capacity type sensor okay so for 100 grams the millivolt per volt is 0 0.6 right millivolts per volt if I multiply if I if I use a full excitation voltage of 6 volts on there then I should expect that for 100 grams I'm going to get what 3.6 millivolts out for that full scale so you can see that's why we use a bridge because that's a very low voltage at the full scale so we want to amplify that enough so that we can measure it without too much noise make note of some of these other specifications like the input resistance is if you look into the full bridge right here if I look in there what's what's the resistance that the equivalent resistance looking in there what's the output resistance if I look at it at it from these terminals and they give you those values these can be useful to know because if you want to test this device let's say you just bought it you want to make sure it's okay you can put an ohmmeter across there and make sure that you're measuring these resistances you can show that the resist that resistance of each of the gauges on here is 1000 ohms right I'm actually leaving that as a pre-lab for you to show Note that one of them is different. Ten, the, output, the input is 1090. Turns out that, that there's an extra resist, there's an extra 90 ohm resistor on the input side of that guy. Okay. And I have one slide at the end of the slides for this set here that'll explain why they put that resistor in there. Okay. And I won't talk about that here. I'll let you read that in the slides that I've posted.